Come on, b- Come on b- bitch, let's bitch, go. Let's go. So let's start off today's show with some really fun things I want to draw your attention to. And then I'm going to get into a Patreon request from Dishing Drama, Dana Wilkie. So the first thing I want to alert you guys to that you're probably not aware of if you're listening to this on all free listening platforms, and that is that I did a Real Housewives of Orange County reunion part one recap with Sarah from Texas, and I dropped it the next day after the show on Friday morning on my YouTube channel, which is Decadish Dana, or you can just look up Dana Wilkie YouTube and it should come up. And it's under the live tabs. And in there, in the first 15 minutes, of that show, I did answer a bunch of burning questions about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City scandal that has erupted, which I find myself implicated in only because I was the influencer that received the gossip about Whitney Rose's jewelry line, Prism, which ended up being that she had actually sourced her stuff from Alibaba, but even worse, didn't change any of the pictures. So literally like copy and pasted the description from Alibaba and then re-put it on Prism, but with a huge markup. And it's come out that they still are doing that sort of thing, but with better providers of materials. So instead of Alibaba to China, she's doing other people's stuff still, you know, with a huge markup, but not, you know, maybe a little higher quality than that. So now I have posted receipts on my Patreon that shows that Whitney Rose lied to Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live this last week when she went on his show and she said that, you know, she was shocked that Adam, up and Adam, was lying because he told her, absolutely, it was Lisa Barlow and you heard the phone call on the show, seems to accept that answer. And then he asks, like, do you still think it's Lisa or kind of like a gray way of asking that question? And Whitney Rose essentially is like, yes, I still think it was Lisa Barlow. That's your friend you had on the phone saying he never told you it was Lisa Barlow who started the Alibaba rumors. Well, I'm very confused because he told me explicitly that it was <laughs> on the on, ca- on camera. Yeah. And just a little back reference there. I'm friends with his husband. Okay. So I'm very confused by the level of thirst and betrayal here because he, I, he's from Utah Mormon culture and I'm not going to sell them out, but I'm very disappointed and hurt by that. Okay. Just so you guys know, Jason only knows Whitney through a distant family member who worked at Target with her. And by the way, she is dragging Target's Target's brand name into the gutter, which is saying something because <laughs> I like Target. But it's hard to like it knowing people like Whitney worked there. Well, it's very disturbing all of this to me. And I've said this on my show and I hope you go watch that live on YouTube because I spill a ton of tea that I haven't spilled publicly yet. I have spilled it in the Patreon, but not in public platforms. And What is very disturbing about this was that I have my DM exchange, which I posted in the Patreon with Whitney Rose, which happened right after that phone call was taped with Adam of her suddenly very disturbed because Adam said uh, either during that phone call edited out or after that phone call and DM exchange that he had spoken to me and that it wasn't Lisa Barlow and was warning her of that. And then she reached out to me on DMs and was panicked and tried to gaslight me like she does all the women on the show and try to get me to tell the information about who sent it, etc. So I had clearly said to her the whole information about this gossip I received and point blank said it wasn't Lisa Barlow. And I said, I, based on all the evidence this Finsta sent me since the beginning of the show, not recently, just on Prism, since the beginning of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, that I believed that it was someone very close to her and definitely not Lisa. And she responded, Heather, and I basically said, you know, 
pretty much, but maybe with some influence with some other people. And we'll leave it at that. I'm paraphrasing. And she accepted that. And actually she believed it was Heather too. You get this feeling by the end of the DM exchange. Also, she said she wasn't using it on the show, an obvious lie, because she had already recorded the phone call. So what does that tell you? And also, she fangirled me and said she was a fan of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills since the beginning of seasons, and she loved the glasses, and how are those sunnies, and all this bullshit. And I even posted the receipts that shows that her caveat she added to the PRISM website about sourcing these things from manufacturers that are curated in Asia or something. She made some kind of fancy disclaimer to try to deal with the, you know, the fact that she's buying junky shit out of China and trying to make it like a higher end jewelry by higher end. I mean, like a hundred dollars. She made it seem like that disclaimer had always been on her website, but it wasn't always on her website. And in fact, the housewife from Salt Lake City that sent me all this tea made sure to alert me when Whitney revised that disclaimer on her website, hoping I would cover it after I dropped my original video outing that her jewelry was from Alibaba and not curated or designed or like being made by some collab with some jewelry maker that she has. Okay, so (laughs) that's it. Okay, so there's just lie on lie on lie on lie. And now I'm pretty sure that all the rumors that Whitney Rose's last three seasons of Storyline are completely lies is true. Yeah, she wasn't having trouble with Justin. Yeah, there was some question about what happened to her that was so traumatic because she never could articulate it to anyone behind the cameras. So in reality, hmm, everybody's wondering on the cast, is Whitney Rose's stories true? Any of them. And I happen to know for a fact that Whitney Rose lied about Angie Harrington and the Knicks game and the whole conversation around Lisa Barlow trading sexual favors for Knicks tickets. That was made up by Whitney Rose. I could keep going. So really, is anything this girl's saying on the show true at all? Probably not. And why the hell is she on a show that's a reality show? Put her on Days of Our Lives and get her off Salt Lake City. So I tell you this because I want you to go watch this YouTube that I did. If you're not on YouTube, it's really easy to get to on your streaming platforms now. You don't have to watch it on computer. And I'd like you to watch this live and listen to the gossip I spill. I do read you the DM exchange and all of this is posted in the Patreon. And I also post Shed reaching out for clearance for me, which I denied them because they wouldn't pay a fee. And I'm tired of being exploited by Bravo for perpetuity to only their benefit and obviously to drag me on their shows, which I wasn't down for. And they did just that. They were like that lying influencer. First of all, I'm not an influencer. I'm an ex-Bravo celebrity. You know, I'm sorry. That is what it is. I was a cast member. I wasn't a guest star. You know, I got cut out for not doing what the producers wanted and later fired for other things. But I mean, the bottom line is like I was on the show. I'm not just an influencer, but that was helpful to them trying to discredit me. And then number two, they call me a liar. And imagine I have a gossip channel with huge credibility at this point, and it does, and I don't care what anyone says, it does. I have over 2,000 patrons in my, you know, listening to my content. They know I back it up with stuff. The people who know, know. And, you know, you can try to retell narratives, but I post the receipts that I have, and I have got more. If people aren't done and they still want to come for me, I have more. I have text messages of people saying they were there. I have text messages of people saying they witnessed events that people are saying they didn't do. I have text messages from Whitney Rose being warned that her MLM is doing fraudulent activity and she continuing to do it. And so if she ends up screwing people down the road, they started to, but they then made right on it. I've got all of them and I will break those damn text messages out. The reason I am willing to do that as a gossiper, because you should be fully gasping at this point, but Dana, how will you get your gossip? I don't get my gossip from the people doing the bad deeds or the scandalous shit. I get the gossip from people around them. That's why you listen to my show and then watch Bravo 
for the narrative that those particular housewives want to tell to usually cover up their lies and misdeeds. Anyway, I've spoken to Adam and Jason and I asked them about that phone call because it made no sense to me how it existed. And I was like, Adam doesn't blatantly lie. It's very unusual. And I was like, she definitely manipulated Adam in some way, but I couldn't figure out in what way she did. You know, not exactly. And him and I hadn't really spoken about it after it aired. We did speak about it after the phone call, but not after it aired, to be clear. It's very confusing in Bravo's landscape because there's when it is shot, you know, as it's being edited, then it's when it comes out and it airs and how it comes out in that format because it isn't always exactly how it went down. So it's very confusing. And obviously there's multiple timelines to pay attention to. So needless to say, I finally reached out to Adam and Jason and Jason called me back and we talked and I found out that what happened was that there was a phone call, one phone call. And in that one phone call with Whitney Rose, she asked about two gossip items uh, to Adam and they have receipts. And The first thing that was asked was, you know, who's been releasing bad things about my daughter because someone had taken to social media about gossip about Whitney Rose's daughter, which she was upset about. And to that answer, Adam answered what you heard on, I guess, the edit that we saw. This is what Jason said. And then there was another conversation about the prism gossip, which you don't see, which was way more gray in the way that Adam answered it. And he wasn't like slam dunk, it's Lisa Barlow, and it's the girl with the tequila and did the whole big tease or whatever that we saw. And so he's saying that that conversation wasn't used, you know, was more gray in the way that he presented it because he hadn't had a chance to talk to me yet about it. And we did talk after the fact and I said it wasn't Lisa. And then he went back to Whitney and had a conversation saying that he thought it was Heather based on his conversation with me. So Jason's way he described it was they took two conversations about gossip and things that were posted that Adam reached out to people about me, one, and somebody else, the other, and kind of edited those conversations together to seem like they were one conversation. And that's his take. And then that worked for Whitney Rose, so she kept going with it. In fact, to this day on Watch What Happens Live. By the way, since this all went down, Lisa Barlow has blocked Whitney Rose, Whitney Rose has blocked Lisa Barlow, Whitney Rose has blocked me, and frankly, nobody gives a shit because who wants Whitney Rose to follow you or even talk to you, frankly. But I do know Lisa Barlow knows I have the receipts and I trust the patron who's communicating with her to make sure she has them if needed or help her get into the patron under another finsta to get them to use on the show. And please note, Shed, don't reach out to me unless you're going to pay me a fee and or be prepared to tell me how you got them when you show them on your little cutesy pop up that goes on in season six. You'd be better just to pay me three grand and have me do a call with Lisa. And really, let's just do it the right way this time, shall we? That's the going appearance fee. So I felt like that was fair. So back to the point, which is on YouTube, Real Housewives of Orange County reunion part one. I do a YouTube video. It's on the live tab. I do it with Sarah from Texas. And I read the DMs between Whitney and I, just like the first page, there are several pages. So I read just one page of it, but you get the picture from it. And what it reflects is Whitney Rose and me DMing each other and she's in a panic and this whole conversation happens and she tries to sway me in a direction, which is Lisa, but it isn't and that's it and disappointing for her because she wants it to be Lisa. And why does she want it to be Lisa? Because Lisa is hated by the cast and is known to use Finsta accounts. And I have no doubt she does. But in this particular case, she's not guilty as charged. So anyway, I explain all of this and more in that YouTube live, which has now been made public. I hope you go listen to it. I am requesting a YouTube live with Jason and Adam, and Adam said he is willing to do it. So I'm just waiting for them to set up a time. I think this would be a good live for us to do, and I will release it as a podcast. The reason is, is it's going to allow no cracks in what happened to occur as Whitney Rose tries to use her larger platform than Up and Adam, just barely though. And mine 
to try to convince the regular Bravo watchers that she is indeed telling the truth and Adam is a liar and the account got the gossip from Lisa and, you know, maybe it isn't me, but it is me and the receipts are in the patron and there's no denying it. And I have a lot more where that came from if she keeps pushing me. So I'm putting this out there so you guys who are fans of Whitney Rose tell her that it's probably best for her to stop now and make sure she doesn't screw anybody in her skin, Caroline, because I'm watching. And her blocking me does nothing because I never gave a shit about what she put on her feed because people never put what they don't want you to see on their feed, only what they do. And I, on my channel, have no interest in that. A patron asked me to do an update on Diddy and his legal case, which I am going to do, but I kind of got distracted by Jennifer Lopez and all of this and all the things that have come out about her and Diddy recently. And I want to give you some insider insight into the Diddy and J-Lo situation. But you know, as I was getting into that whole thing, I was reminded about all of the situations that are happening around the Justice Department right now with Trump, with the things that have come out in regards to Epstein, with the things that have come out about Kamala Harris, with the things that have come out about Hunter Biden and Ellison. And I mean, I could throw in Elon Musk. I could throw in Russell Brand. I could throw in, I mean, we're talking both sides of the parties here. We're talking men and women. And I started to go down this rabbit hole of sort of the corruption of the elite at the moment and how it ties back to Hollywood in a way, because I party with so many of these powerful people back when I was in Los Angeles, and I was always shocked at the corruption around them all and how everybody perceived them as being so perfect, but they weren't. And so I have to give you a trigger warning before we go into the second half of the show, which is I'm going to be playing phone calls of Epstein talking for the full scoop, join the Dishing Drama Dana Patreon. The link is in this audio description. It's only $6 a month and you'll get the best information and tea about the things you care about and even the things you don't know you care about. What are you waiting for?